الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب أن بدأ continue on in our series about the uh, صلاة and purification uh, basic fit Imam Fozan حفظ الله تعالى he mentioned in the next uh, chapter he mentioned the etiquettes of answering the call of nature and this is in the tartib in the same way that you have a lot of the scholars in fiqh in their books in fiqh you'll see that they have chapters uh, about qada al haja which means basically the etiquettes of uh, answering the call of nature so Imam Fozan he says it will not escape you my dear reader May Allah grant you, me, and all Muslim success that Islam is perfect, unique, uh, and an integral religion. There is nothing required for our worldly and religious lives that it is not clearly pointed out in Islam. So here Imam Fozan, he's talking about the excellence of Islam, that Islam uh, is complete and that there is something in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ for every situation basically. There's everything with regarding even minute details of how the adab and manners of using the restroom akramakumullah. Uh, and then he said, and he also began by making dua, which is also the way of many of the scholars in the past, is that they would supplicate, you know, make dua for the people who are reading their books or when giving, when you're teaching or giving a lesson and so forth, making dua for your students. And this will cause them to open their hearts and be more uh, attuned to listening and benefiting from the lesson. And likewise, it's dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it's an actualization of tawheed. And it is, uh, you know, something ta'ala that Allah will accept. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make uh, ease for all the Muslims, especially our brothers and sisters in China. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So he said, even the etiquette to be observed upon answering the call of nature is pointed out, so that man whom Allah has honored over animals becomes distinguished from animals in this concern with such proprieties. Islam is a religion of tahara, of cleanliness and purity. Therefore, there are Islamic etiquettes to be observed on entering the bathroom while answering the call of nature and on leaving it. So there's three etiquettes that uh, the Imam is talking about here. The etiquette of entering the bathroom, uh, uh, you know, there's the, the etiquettes of duhul, of entering the bathroom, the etiquettes while you're in the bathroom, there's certain manners to observe and the manners of leaving the bathroom, what you should do, what you should say as far as supplications. He says, <clears throat> upon entering the bathroom, it is desirable for a Muslim to say, he says, in the name of Allah, I seek refuge with Allah from all offensive and wicked things. Uh, stepping in with his left leg, when leaving, it is desirable to step out with the right leg, invoking, I seek your forgiveness, praise be to Allah, who removed harm from me and gave me health. So that's a supplication when you leave the bathroom. So he mentioned the one in entering and the one in leaving. As far as the one in entering, Imam Fozan mentioned, perhaps this is uh, what is a custom according to the Hanbali Madhab. However, when looking at the, uh, the Hadith, that you find that uh, many of the scholars say that it is a Ba'if Hadith mentioning the, the addition of Bismillah. So Imam Fuzan, he mentioned, he said, upon entering the bathroom, it's desirable for a Muslim to say, Bismillah, a'udhu billah, Allahumma inni, a'udhu bika min al khutfi wa khaba'ith. But however, that Bismillah, the Bismillah, is additional. And you'll find in Sahih Bukhari, it's just mentioned, Allahumma inni, a'udhu bika min al khutfi wa khaba'ith. You know, which means, I seek refuge with Allah from all offensive and wicked things, meaning the evil deeds and evil spirits or the uh, of the shayateen. And some, some of the scholars, they mention in Al-Khubthi uh, wa being the, the shayateen from the, the, the males and the females. So that's a place of the shayateen. So we have to be, you know, all the filthy places, the shayateen from amongst the jinn and so on. They, uh, they inhabit those places. So that's why you have to be very careful. And it's important to say that dua. Always remember that dua before entering the bathroom. And as he said, stepping in with the left leg. So begin with your left leg and uh, while you're saying that dua. 
And then when you leave, leave with the, it's desirable to leave with the right leg and say the supplication, I seek your forgiveness, gufranaka, uh, and praise be to Allah who removed from me and gave me help. Uh, no. And then he said, this is because the right hand or leg is used for whatever is related to honor and beautification, whereas the left is used for whatever is related to removing impurities and the like. In one case, uh, in the case one has to answer the call of nature outdoors, outside. So if you're hiking, you're camping, whatever the case, or you just have to be. He said, at a place not prepared for that purpose, it is desirable for one to do so away from people. So first you should try to be away from people, obviously, so people can't see you, see your aura and things like this. Screening oneself behind a wall, a tree, or the like. In addition, while answering the call of nature outdoors, one is prohibited to face or turn one's back towards the Qibla. So you should try not to face the Qibla or turn your back to the Qibla. Try to turn away as the Prophet ﷺ said in authentic hadith. Sharrahu o gharrahu. The Prophet ﷺ said, you know, turn, you know, eastward or westward from the Qibla. So try not to face it and try not to turn your back to the Qibla when you're outdoors and you have nothing in front of you. So those are also from the etiquettes of using the restroom. Uh, and he said, uh, rather one should move eastward or westward to avoid facing or turning one's back towards the Qibla, as the Prophet ﷺ has forbidden both to be done while answering the call of nature. On the other hand, one must be cautious of splashing one's urine because it might be on your clothing and get on your body. Hence, one is re recommended to select a smooth ground when having to urinate outdoors as to avoid being soiled by the scatter of one's urine. So you should be careful not to be on rocks or things like that where it's going to splash on you, the karmical law. Besides, while answering the call of nature, it's impermissible for one to touch one's stool and urine exits with one's right hand. So you should not touch uh, a karmical law where you uh, use the bathroom with your right hand, okay? Uh, it is also impermissible to answer the call of nature at a public road or a place used by people as a shelter in, or shelter or source of water used by people. So you should not do it in a place where there's going to be evidence, where there's going to be harm for the people. And this is also in an authentic hadith of the Prophet wasallam. So the Sheikh is not giving you all the evidences, he's just giving you in general the understanding from those evidences. He's not mentioning the many ahadith that you'll find in the books mentioning Tahara about some of these etiquettes uh, so that uh, you know one of the things you shouldn't make use the restroom in the shade because people especially in the past the travelers they use the shade to rest in so you don't want to a karmakama law use the bathroom there and people are sitting and it's, and it's smelling the place and so forth likewise you should not urinate or defecate in a hole because those are the places of the jinn and you might cause harm to the jinn and might disturb them and they might be upset with you and they could inhabit you or whatever you cause you harm uh, and you shouldn't do it on the side of the road where people are going so unfortunately you'll travel in many places and sometimes you see some places where the people they just got a filthy habit and you'll see them just pull their pants down and people are walking up and down the road especially in a lot of third world countries and they'll just do their thing right there <laughs> you know it's, it's really so those things are impermissible. Instead, they should seek shelter, try to cover themselves behind some bushes, something, and not on the road where the people are walking and not, you know, and where it's going to harm the people, the smell and other things. He also said, and not in a source of water. This is because the Prophet is forbidden doing so, such as such deeds cause harm to people. On the other hand, one should never enter a bath while having something like a paper or document or anything else containing the name of Allah. So, of course, you shouldn't go in with the Quran or with your dua books or some hadith, uh, uh, especially with Quranic verses in the bathroom or the place you're going to use the restroom. If one fears that one may lose them, if you're scared you're going to lose it, for example, you're at a Duxigad Quranka, you know, you're at a place where you're learning the Quran or something and you have the Qur'an with you, and then you go in, you you know, it's a place where you can't leave your mushaf somewhere, and you have to go in the bathroom, then make sure, you know, it should be covered in your garment, or put it up so it's not uh, in the actual place where you're gonna use the restroom, because I remember in Yemen, 
especially in Dimaj and those places that are often people, they had their books and stuff and they would go and they would commonly, they put their thing, or even the haram sometimes you see and the people, because they have to go to the bathroom and they have their personal mushaf, they're not leaving it in the haram, the haram's huge. So then they put it on top of the bathroom stall and they don't actually enter the stall with it. So, and that's out of kind of a semi necessity there. Uh, then he says, uh, moreover, it is not allowed to speak while answering the call of nature because it's mentioned in a hadith that Allah hates such a deed. So when, uh, so it's prohibited to recite the Quran in a bath or while answering the call of nature. Okay, And you should also avoid speaking when you're using the bathroom. When one finishes, so this is the adab for leaving and finishing, answering the call of nature, one must perform istinja, or this is ethna, uh, this is the adab during the uh, restroom. So when you finish, of course, you make istinja, that's essential. Uh, istinja or istijmar. Istinja means to use water to uh, purify yourself, clean your private parts, okay? Akramakumullah. Uh, and istijmar, this means to use hajr, to use rocks or so forth. So, uh, what is, and, and so then he, he mentions, in fact, it is better to combine both. So the best is to use both. So obviously when you're in a restroom nowadays, in the restrooms, you don't have rocks, but you can use toilet paper. Okay, you can use toilet paper and you can wet the paper and clean your private parts and this is the best uh, because this is a combination of using water and it's istinja uh, istinjma. It's a combination of both. So you can use your, uh, you know, wet the toilet paper and clean yourself at Karamakamala and you clean yourself with your right or left. With your left. Barakallah. Good. So, uh, so then. He said, when one's uh, cleaning one's stool in urine exits following the defecation or urina urination, yet performing either is, su is sufficient. So you could use either one if you only had toilet paper or if you're outdoors because often, you know, you're hiking, you're camping. So then you might, uh, you get your rocks. You find your rocks and you use that. You use that for karma uh, kamala, for istinja, for urine. You use, and you should use a three, uh, a minimum of three. It should be witter, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, uh, or you use it for a karmakum Allah for defecation. Doesn't mean you have to get every spot because it's impossible to get every spot, but you do the best you can and you should end on witter. So if it takes five instead of three, do five. If five is not enough, then seven. If seven is not enough, nine, nine rocks. And some say that you can, you know, use, you know, you might have not have to use nine different rocks, but you could use one rock and use different sides. Okay, and you're obviously not trying to hurt yourself. You're trying to clean yourself, the karmak of Allah. So uh, often, sometimes I'm hiking and I can't find rocks even. So you use leaves, you use, uh, you have to use things which are bahir. They have to be pure. You cannot use animal dung as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned. So you can't use the, the roth or which is animal dung, you know, from a coyote or a cougar or a bear or something like this, there, or, or an elk, because that is not pure to, to use for that purpose. And it is the food of the jinn, as the messenger, alayhi salatu was salam, he mentioned. So he said, during istijmar, istijmar is using the rocks, one should clean one's stool and urine exits with stones or what may substitute for them, okay? Uh, such as a coarse, as coarse paper, you know, toilet paper or something like that, a rag or the like, ensuring the cleanliness and dryness of the stool and urine exits. So you should try to, it should be dry and try to clean it as best as you can. One must clean them thrice or more. As we mentioned, it should be winter and the minimal is three. Uh, one should also remove any trace of impurity and dry it, least any impurity remains on one's stool and urine exits, or soils one's clothes or other parts of the body. So you do your best to try to clean it as much as possible. Uh, 
then he mentions, he says, some of the fuqaha, the scholars of fiqh, maintain that istinja or istijmar is one of the conditions of the validity of your uh, pahara, of your ablution, that must be performed before it, uh, if you use the restroom. According to this opinion, ablution is invalid if it is performed without proceeding by istinja or istijmar after answering the call of nature. This ruling is based on a hadith narrated on the authority of Al-Maqdad stating one should wash one's akramakum Allah private part and then perform ablution. Uh, this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Also, the hadith which shows us that if you don't, uh, that that one of the reasons for the punishment of the grave is for people who did not clean themselves properly. The Prophet Sallallahu was walking by two graves. مَرَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى قَبْرَيْنِ فَقَالَ إِنَّهُمْ لِيُعَذِّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذِّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَرُ مِنَ الْبَوْءِ وَمَا الْآخَرُ فَكَانَ يَمْشِي بِالنَّمِيمَةِ The Prophet ﷺ was walking by some graves in a graveyard and he said, he mentioned uh, about two of the graves, he walked by two graves and he said, verily they're being punished and they're being punished for something that the people don't think is a big thing and then he said, and as for one of them is they used to not clean themselves when they uh, urinated. And as for the second, they used to make namima. Okay? So this shows us that those are reasons for punishment for the uh, punishment for the grave. And namima means like to carry tales around the community to uh, to to spread wicked tales around the community. For example, you talk about someone and you or you embellish something. It could be true about them. It could be whatever. But you are spreading it in order to spread evil. Listen, listen what I heard about so and so. Uh, so and so did this, and, and it, sometimes it grows and it grows. And your your cuss, your intention is to spread wickedness. You kind of want to entertain the people off the off the 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 speaking evil about someone else or spreading evil. So it's very important to make sure you clean yourself properly. Uh, Imam Nawawi states that is an act of the Sunnah, the Prophet uh, the Sunnah, to perform istinja before ablution so as to avoid any controversy or suspicion and to ensure the validity of one's ablution. So you 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 must do that. You need to clean yourself. Therefore, one must purify oneself from urine, as negligence in this regard is one of the reasons for the torture of the grave, as we mentioned. And then he mentions that same hadith. Or another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Purify yourselves from urine, for the most, for most of the punishment in the grave is because because of it. So either one of two ways, either because you urinate and it splashes on your clothes, or you urinated and you didn't, they didn't make you didn't wash and it just comes out a karmakumala or something like that. So there's two ways that that can happen. So you have to be careful and do your best. I am probably more so for men, even more so." than women because they have more opportunity to leak it. So, uh, the Shaykh, he then says, Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, narrated on the authority of uh, one of the companions of the Prophet wasallam that the Prophet was leading the people in Subh, in the morning prayer in Fajr, reciting the Surah Ar-Rum. He was not certain about what he recited, so when he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam finished prayer, he said, the Quran becomes dubious to us because some of you perform prayer with us without performing ablution properly. So whoever witnesses the prayer with us should perform ablution properly. So make sure your tahara is pure. Allah also praised the people of, of Quba Masjid because of the perfection of their purification. So you want a, a purification of tahara is essential. It's a shart for your salat. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, with, within it are men who love to purify themselves and Allah loves those who purify themselves. Verily, Allah loves the mutatahirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people who are purified. And also, Al-Bazaar related that when the people of Kuba were asked about the way they purify themselves, they replied saying, we use water after using stones. So that shows that they made the, the combination between istinja with istijma. Very important. Uh, a good lesson for us to be aware of and to keep our conclude uh, to keep ourselves clean uh, in this connection or in this light it might be worth mentioning that some people mistakenly believe istinja is integral part of evolution 
Meaning, uh, uh, they think that one has to start with istinja whenever one desires to perform ablution, even if one has previously performed it after answering the call of nature. So some people, they think it's an obligation that it's a condition of tahara, meaning that even though they didn't go to the bathroom, they believe they have to clean themselves. So you see that where bid'ah and, and many uh, false beliefs, it's so, when people use their ra'i, their intellect, they come up with all kind of theories. And I remember one thing that I used to see in Yemen, it may be for another reason, but I would see in some of the masajid, uh, some of the Shia would do this, and even some of the Sunnis would do this. And it was probably because they, some of these people were not clean, you know, in general. But I would see them come into the masjid, and they would take off, literally pull up his garment, and take off under his stove, take off his underwear. Because a lot of times they didn't even wear the the pants under their garment, a karamak of Allah, and they would just put it in the shoebox. And then when they finished prayer, they would, because they, maybe because it had filth in it, or they felt, you know, and then after that, and I, there might have been some sort of aqida issue with that, I don't know. But, and just, in plain and simple, just lack of hygiene. And so they felt, hey, I can't pray in these things because I've spilt and I've done this. Who knows? But this shows us the importance of the ilm. Of knowledge that you have to have knowledge of your deen. May yirin the law will be khayr and you fiqh of your deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh, understanding the religion, and you need that fiqh be deen so you know that when things are false, you're going to see all kind of strange things when you mix with the Muslims around the world. Will Allah understand? So some of the people believe that uh, that they must make a stinja even if they didn't go to the bathroom. Imam Fozan says this is completely wrong. Istinja is not a part of evolution, but it is just one of its requirements as mentioned. And and is performed only after answering the call of nature. Thus one does not have to perform it unnecessarily before evolution. Those are just some of the important things that the Imam mentions, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wasallallahu wasallam, ala Nabiya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wasallam.